It is uh, Wednesday, March 23rd at 9.05 p.m. I've already done some sketching. I just wanted to uh, do one more small, quick little sketch. I'm using the Sakura Pigma Professional Brush Pen FB, which stands for Fine Brush, and it has water-resistant ink that I can wash over immediately with watercolor. It is very dried out. I like drawing with this pen when it's very dried out as a solid fiber tip. I'm using Portofino Aquarello watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton. It's 140 pounds. It is made by Magnani. Uh, the pad that I'm using is 20 years old, so I have no way of knowing if they make it the same way. I found this pad while I was doing the downsizing. So this is maybe uh, made the same today, but this is an old pad and I can't guarantee that you'll have the same experience. I'm working on hot press because I just love hot press paper. Do a little dog.
I'm used to doing black and white dogs with Indanthrum Blue and Burnt Sienna and getting all the warms and cools I want. And now I really like this sketch, but just to be obnoxious, I've been working with this um, green gold vermilion, which is an orangey red, uh, quin pink, which is a cool red, but I'm mixing the quin pink with the um, phthalo blue, and these three are from Richardson, this is from Schmincke, and I am going to um, try and mix these into some kind of warm and cool. So, what the heck. I am not... comfortable with that, but we'll... I've been working in this uh, for the last several weeks, and um, I kind of burnt out on it. I just don't know which way I want to go with things. And I have to get this really... Turn out darky green. So I can get the steel blue, which is nice. And I can go in here and get a brown of uh, sort of maroon. Oops, I just lost my white right away. it just the way it was mixed on my brush just came out warm and cool it's kind of interesting Go back when that dries and get some of those other areas.
too far down here. I went into the white down here. So I should end it right there. But that was my sneezing. Staining blue. Although this is a hundred percent cotton paper with a gel sizing on it, so that's okay. As my initial layers of paint have dried, I've been able to go back on top of them with other layers, layers that are more saturated, that have less water in them, so they're of a darker value. And in this way, I can have a range of values from very light shades of neutral to darker values across the surface. The mopping up I do with paper towel is, I think, a habit that sketching from life in public has led me to develop in the sense that you can't go on to the next thing on your painting if the paper's too wet, but you can put some color down, mop it up with a paper towel, and keep working and get the darker colors in and move to the next uh, value level, so to speak, more quickly if you do that. So I think that's why I started doing that. Um, but it just sort of dawned on me to mention that right now while I was watching myself work in the editing process. I'm not saying this is a good habit to be in, but I think that if you're going to work from life in public, which is how I prefer to work, then you're going to have to do something about your water management so that you can work in a timely fashion. Even though I'm working with a size 10 round brush, it's a synthetic brush from Richeson, uh, Stephen Quiller, uh, and I don't know that they still make this brush, but it's a synthetic brush. Even though I'm working with this rather large brush, it has a nice fine point, and that allows me to go into detail work if I want. So it holds a lot of uh, water and pigment in its belly and allows me to work for quite a while. And it does come to a fine point. I like to work with the largest brush possible for the longest time so that I don't get fussy with details. I think it's important when you're doing animals to be very careful with the eyes. The eyes are really gonna sell the portrait. And in order to do this, you need to really observe animals from life as much as possible. Do just drawings of eyes if you have a dog or a cat living at home with you and get that stuff down on the paper and, and notice how the light goes through the eyeball and which reflections are important. Then when you're out and about and you're drawing live animals, 
you'll be able to do that because you've done it with the live still animals at home and maybe you've looked also at some photo references and you've practiced that but you've already broken down how things are going to work with the light on the eyeball and once you do that it's important then to render those carefully so that the values come across and you get that sense of roundness and luminosity. Cute little dog. Trying to get that a little darker. stop that and take my little rigger thing. This is a little liner brush, monogram liner, rigger brush does the same thing. I'm going to get some of this mix that I have that I really like and I'm going to go around that needs to be And this is going to come out.
Yeah, I'm going to leave that. I need to really rub some of that back in the eye, but I think I'm going to leave it. I'm using an old synthetic round brush and I am applying clean water to areas I want to pick up, uh, color to make a lighter value, and then I'm mopping with the paper towel. Ideally, after each one of these maneuvers in an area, I would clean my brush and it's obvious I'm not doing that. That's because there's just one color that I'm removing from these areas, but you should clean your brush. This is so nice to work on this kind of paper and have that ability to pick up. Watch your paper towel there. Okay, let's see if I can get that up. When lifting color with a paper towel like I'm doing, it's very important to constantly turn the surface of the paper towel to a clean portion of the paper towel. Sometimes in my haste, I might not do that, and then you might see on the edges or somewhere there's other colors get deposited or something else might happen. So if neatness matters to you, constantly be presenting a clean portion of the paper towel to the surface of your painting. It's very important. Yep. Another bad habit I've developed in the field is related to lifting. So you'll often see me push the color outside the boundary of my drawing. And I don't go back and try and obsessively remove that. It is what it is. I think since the majority of what I'm doing when I'm out and about is live animals, it just gives them a fuzzy look. And to me, it doesn't matter. I think it maybe even acts like an additional enhancement in some instances. But again, this is a matter of how much care you want to give. It's very easy to do this at your desk and be precise. If you're standing in a public area with the book in your hand and your palette in your hand and the paper towel and you're, you're working like that uh, and juggling things, it's much more difficult to be precise. And over time, it's just something that I've come to ex ex you know, accept as part of the approach that I take and it doesn't bother me at all and, um, and I just keep going. So decide what you want to do, think about uh, what's important to you, and then work to the tidiness level that you need. Okay. 
んだけど。Okay. Yep, I'm gonna make that. We'll be coming to the end of this session in a moment, and I just wanted to remind you that if you're interested in seeing real-time videos of me sketching and talking about color theory and my art choices and line quality and art materials, all of those things, you can join me at patreon.com forward slash Roz Interim. I'd love to see you there, and you can join the conversation by subscribing at one of the tier levels available. For the tier three level subscribers of my Patreon, there is also a Facebook group where subscribers can post their work and it can be discussed. And it's where we hold a live webinar every month for those tier three subscribers. So I hope you'll think about coming and joining me. Dog. And there. We are done. It's actually nine thirty six. So that's using that triad again. Um, it's more purple than I am usually comfortable with, but I haven't adjusted to making the same neutral, so I like it. I, I could live with it. <laughs> that was all I had. That's what we're trying to do is find out what we can get by with. Here's a scan of the finished painting. It's on a sheet that is nine inches wide and four and a half inches tall. And here's a little zoom in close up of some of the details. And you can see the nice soft texture of the paper. It's a nice smooth paper.